After the non-avian dinosaurs went extinct around 66 million years ago, a new group of giants started to walk this earth. There were many famous giant reptiles and mammals, and of course there were some surviving dinosaurs. Unfortunately, the majority of these creatures are gone today, and we played a part in some of their extinctions. Fossils help us to imagine what these creatures were really like, and of course so do their modern day ancestors. There are plenty of creatures alive today that are related to extinct megafauna, and in this video I will be going through some of the best examples. The first group of creatures we will be taking a look at are the pterobirds. The pterobirds are an extinct family of large carnivorous flightless birds, and their temporal range covers around 53 to 2.5 million years ago. Their size varied greatly from species to species, as some were only around a metre tall, whereas some of the largest were around 3 metres tall. These birds were some of the top predators in South America during their reign, but they eventually moved north into North America during the Great American Interchange. These giant birds were very successful predators, and it's most likely that they preyed on small to medium sized mammals and reptiles. The reason behind this giant bird's extinction is often debated, but it's believed that they went extinct due to environmental changes, and also through competition with North American predators. It would have been quite a sight to see these giant birds roam across the plains of South America, but unfortunately today they are no longer with us. Every member of the terror bird family has perished, but they do still have some relatives alive today. They were part of a larger order of birds, and one of the families in this order still has some surviving members. The Ceramars are a group of South American birds, and they are the sole living members of their family. They are the only surviving lineage of their order, and they are the closest relatives of the terror birds. The crested Ceramar is thought to be the species that's most closely related to the terror birds, and it does resemble these extinct birds in many ways. Even though they are nowhere near the size of the terror birds, they are still relatively large birds, as they stand around 90 centimeters tall, and they can weigh up to 2.5 kilograms. These birds have a very distinctive call that sounds a bit like a maniacal laugh. And just like the terror birds, they are a mostly predatory species. They feed on a variety of prey, including arthropods, lizards, amphibians, snakes, and rodents. They have a very interesting way of killing their prey, as they will often pick them up and then slam them on the ground. This seems to do the trick in most cases, and in South America they are a relatively successful species. These birds help to give us an idea as to what the terror birds were like, and they might even share some behaviours and traits. For now, all we can do is imagine, and even though it's sad that the terror birds are gone, at least they have some much smaller relatives that are still alive today. The next group of extinct animals we will be looking at are the Galiptodons. The Galiptodons are a group of mammals that lived from the Pleistocene around 3.2 million years ago to the early Holocene around 11,000 years ago. These creatures were found in South America and as you might be able to tell, they weren't built for speed. They had a giant round carapace and small stubby legs. These animals were built for defense and not for running, and in most cases this strategy worked against predators. Of course, these mammals varied in size greatly, but some of them measured up to 2 meters long and weighed as much as 400 kilograms. One of the few ways that predators could tackle this beast was by flipping it onto its back and exposing its soft underbelly. As I'm sure some of you already know, the Glyptodons have quite a few relatives alive today. As you might be able to tell by their body shape and their armor, these creatures were actually herbivorous armadillos. For many years, it was unknown which armadillo species was most closely related to the Galiptodons, but thanks to a study back in 2016, we now know. The Galiptodons were most closely related to two armadillo species. One was understandably the giant armadillo, and the other was the pink fairy armadillo. The giant armadillo is the largest armadillo species alive today, with captive specimens reaching a weight of around 80 kilograms. You could argue that this species most closely resembles the Galiptodons, but the pink fairy armadillo really doesn't. This species is endemic to central Argentina, and it is a relatively small species. They max out at around 12 centimeters long, and they only weigh around 120 grams. 
This size means that it's the smallest species of armadillo alive today, and it's also the species that we know the least about. It's strange that the Galiptodons are most closely related to the smallest and largest armadillos alive today, and this only adds to their mystery. It's believed that we played a part in this animal's extinction, but thankfully we didn't get rid of all of the armadillos. The final extinct creature we will be taking a look at is Megalodon. Megalodon is an extinct species of giant shark, and it's a shark that many people are understandably fascinated with. It lived around 23 to 3.6 million years ago, and it's thought to be the largest shark and fish to have ever lived. Even though the Megalodon is a very popular species and stars in many films and stories, we still know very little about this shark. Megalodon is only known from a few fragmentary remains, and we are still unable to accurately depict its appearance. Estimates of its size vary greatly, but based on the dimensions of the great white shark, it's thought that it could have reached a maximum length of around 20 meters. A shark of this size would have weighed in at around 100 metric tons, and I'm sure most people out there are happy that it's not alive today. It's believed that this shark had a cosmopolitan distribution, and it had a major effect on marine ecosystems. It's believed that it preyed on whales and other marine mammals, as well as giant turtles and seals. It would have faced competition from large predatory whales, but it's safe to say that Megalodon was an apex predator. Megalodon had vanished before humans were around, so it's impossible that we played a part in their extinction. Quite a few factors led to the demise of these giant sharks, and one of these factors was a change in climate. At the end of its reign, the global water temperature dropped, and this reduced the area where the megalodon could survive. Because of this change in climate, a lot of their prey also disappeared, and as they were so large, they needed a lot of food to survive. Eventually, these giants disappeared for good, but thankfully they have some relatives still alive today. It's a common misconception that the great white shark is the megalodon's closest living relative, because even though they are related, the megalodon's closest living relative is the shortfin mako shark. The shortfin mako and the great white shark are in the same family, and the megalodon would have looked a lot more like the great white shark. The shortfin mako is built for speed, and it has a slimmer, more streamlined body. It's almost impossible for us to imagine what the Megalodon was like, because it's almost impossible to comprehend its size. If it was still around, our oceans would be a lot more dangerous, and it would probably mean that the blue whale would have never have evolved. For now, all we have are its relatives, and I'm sure most people would like to keep it that way. Of course, there are quite a few other creatures that I could have included in this video, so if you know of any, then let me know down in the comments below. But for now, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.